But we start here this morning where the almost 400 million rand transnet corruption case has now been postponed to the 28th of September. 11 accused, this including former execs, namely Brian Molefe and Siabong Agama, this including Anoj Singh, were all in the dock. And the group are facing a raft of charges including fraud, corruption and money laundering. Now this is all in connection to transnet's procurement of over a thousand locomotives back in 2015. ENC as Heidi Jockers has been monitoring proceedings at the Palm Ridge Specialized Commercial Crimes Court and she joins me now to give us these details. Heidi, good morning to you, colleague. Always a pleasure uh, talking to you. But this time around, seeing uh, Brian Molefe and Anush Singh appearing in court, but it seems it was just for another postponement announcement. Yes, exactly. Um, Dumelo, we did see 11 co-accused in the dock today here at the Palm Ridge um, Specialized Crimes Court. Uh, and this all stems to a 405 million rand transnet consultancy corruption case. Um, and as you mentioned, the accused do, of course, include Brian Molefe, Anoj Singh, as well as Siabong Agama. We did see them in court today. Um, they actually don't all fit in, uh, all 11 don't actually fit in the dock. Some were actually just standing on on the side, but this all stems from a, a corruption a consultancy case. We do also understand that uh, um, there is a Gupta a company linked uh, here, a trillion a company that's also linked in all of this. Um, it's still very early days, but we do know there are, uh, of course, facing charges of corruption and fraud. Um, it's a very large number we're looking at here. It's about 405 million rand. The matter has been postponed to the 28th of September, and this is for uh, all legal representatives to further familiarize themselves with the documentation that has been given. They, of course, have been given the charge sheets. Uh, this was given to them a while ago, but they obviously need, need to deal with the particulars of the matter. There was some pushback from accused number four's legal representative. He claims that the documentation has has been given uh, at a very late stage um, to him and uh, he claims it was given to him very late last night therefore he was unable to go through the documentation and he is proposing for a sooner date instead of the 28th of September that matter is still going on uh, and they will obviously finalize a date on um, when the, uh, accused number four should appear. Um, we will be speaking to the investigating directorate because there are of course concerns that this matter is taking somewhat a little bit longer than expected. We do know with the Nulane case uh, in the Free State um, that the National Prosecuting Authority basically lost uh, due to uh, it not having a, a strong case. Um, uh, you know, there are concerns that is this going to be the case for this this case and any other case that looks at uh, what happened with state capture. So uh, we will be speaking to the investigating directorate. We're just waiting for her to get out of court as she is waiting for that date around uh, accused number four. Yeah, it seems when that engagement took place uh, regarding the postponement and, of course, the legal representative, Heidi, lamenting uh, the delays and saying the 28th of September was too far ahead, other legal reps didn't necessarily mind. They had no objections to that postponement. So it seems that uh, the suspects then, that they are representing their clients, will appear in court on the 28th. Yes, exactly. Um, it seems as though the other legal representatives, so the other 10 legal representatives, did not uh, have any pushback or any um, uh, issue with the 28th of September, um, and they will be appearing on the 28th. And this will, of course, uh, determine whether or not there's going to be pre-trial and when a trial date is going to be set, because there's often criticism around the fact that these matters take very long to reach trial, and also the fact that the National Prosecuting Authority uh, does not speed up these cases. We're talking about 405 million rand. Uh, I've actually just taken a, a quick glance at some of the other charges that uh, all 11 uh, accused are facing. So as I mentioned, it's uh, facing charges ranging from fraud, corruption, money laundering, and contravention of the Public Finance Management Act relating to a 2012 to 2015 locomotives transaction advisory tender at the state-owned entity. 
And this is all significant, Tumelo, because if you look at what's currently happening at Transnet, it's really buckling under. We do know that there have been major issues with regards to some of those uh, deals and tenders that were awarded um, as far back as 2012 as uh, these 11 accused are facing uh, from 2012 to 2015. Um, it's one of our crucial, crucial uh, state-owned entities that really can bring our economy to its knees. And we are seeing, because of the state that Transnet is in at the moment, there are major issues with, uh, with uh, the state-owned entity. So it's going to be imperative for this matter to continue and proceed and to really understand what happened and whether or not these co-accused, uh, what happened during 2012 and 2015 with the, these locomotives, because these uh, charges they are facing are rather serious, fraud corruption, uh, money laundering, and, uh, of course, violating the PFMA. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see what comes on the 28th of September.